guys, welcome back to Loopy Lions Designs. We're going to do a live stitch out and show you how easy it is to make a hooded towel. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, like Kaylin said, we are going to do a hooded towel. And since she is helping me, she has picked which design we're going to do. And of course, we're going to do Batman. She's obsessed with Batman. And I even noticed that <laughs> she got dressed for the occasion. She's wearing her Batman shirt. Um, I'm going to hand over the camera and let her start taping. She's going, or I'm going to show you everything you need to know for a hooded towel from cutting the hoods how I make the hoods finish them up and get them ready to sew so here we go I'm gonna flip the camera and get started okay so first I have everything on the table that we're going to need as far as supplies I have the yellow is what we're gonna make the hood out of and then I've got my vinyl, I've got my hoop already with the stabilizer hooped inside of it because we're actually going to float the hood, so we'll pin it there. I've got my scissors, my rotary cutter, and then my Solvi um, to put on top while it stitches, and my pins. So what I do for my hoods, get all the stuff out of the way, and this is the final towel, so we don't need that till the end. So for the hoods, we have our towel long ways. I'm going to fold it in half. So again, it's still long ways. And then we're going to cut this. And I'm going to line it up. If you want to show over here, I'm going to line up this end because I want to cut this part off. I don't use the very end at all. It'll just add bulk and we don't want that. So I leave that just at the edge of my zero. Oops, and throw my scissors. <laughs> Each towel is going to make four hoods, and then you're going to have a little bit extra, and I'll show you what I do with those two. So we're going to cut off the edge. Oh my gosh, I think I hit the side. That was not good. We're going to do that again. I think I've been making too many towels. My blade is getting dull. Okay. And then we're going to do two at a time here. So we're going to leave it folded. And then I'm going to go down to 24. My finished towel hood is 10 inches by 24 inches. So we're going to go down to the 24 and cut this side. Yeah, the blade is not cutting. I'm cutting too many hood bands too. Yeah. Okay, so now we have half of our towel. And then, anyway, is my guide is not long enough and my mat isn't big enough. So anyway, we have half of our towel. So now we're gonna fold it again and with our new seam, or not our new seam, our new edge and the edge we cut. So both areas that we cut, we're gonna put those together. And now we're gonna cut our 10 inches. So if you look here, if you come closer, I don't know how close you are. This is the natural hem, seam, whatever, finished edge of the towel. And that we want at the base of our peaker. So I'm gonna leave that there. And then I'm gonna cut up 10 inches. So this is now our hood. This is what we're gonna work with, but I'm gonna show you what else we do really quick before I move on. So to make the other side, cause we're still, we still have three more to go. I'm just gonna do the first two, but line the other finished edge up, go back to 10, But that one and so now we've only used half of our towel and we've got two hoods and the reason I've only got two I've got the finished edge on both of them and that's what I like at the bottom it's less work and now we're left with this really big piece it has no finished edge on it it's been cut on all four sides and that's a really big piece of waste some people use it as their appliques so you don't have to use vinyl or fleece what I actually do Kaylin's holding one 
is I finished them into burp cloths. This I actually cut a smaller piece um, for different sizes. But th so the towels on the back, I sew it inside out with a piece. I have sewn that whole shelf is all just flannel because when they put flannel on sale at Joann's, I'm obsessed. They're so cute. So I have a ton of it and I never use it. So anyway, now we're making burp cloths. We've used the last piece of the towel. So anyway, you don't have a lot of waste and get your money's worth out of the towel. So anyway, back to our hooded towel. We're going to put all these out of the way. And we've got our one hood that we're going to work with. And now what I do is I find the front of the towel. And I usually look um, at this seam. You can tell which is the front, which is the back. So I want my design to stitch on this front part of my hood. So what I'm going to do is I fold it in half to find the center. That's all I'm doing. And then I get my hoop because we're going to, oops, my stabilizer puffed out when I do it on top of that. Hold on. Malfunction. Don't okay. forget to put it sideways. I know. So we've got our stabilizer all hooped. This particular design his head is going to go up and down like this. So whatever way the design is facing, you want the bottom of your towel at the bottom of the face, typically where the nose or the mouth is. So I'm going to leave my frame long ways. Now I'm going to take my towel, I have it folded in half, and I'm going to line it up with my center marks on my hoop. And then I'm going to open it. Because now that finished edge of the front of the towel that I want to be visible when my finished product is done, that's now right here and it's ready to go and be stitched on. So I'm going to pin this guy. If you have any questions, make sure and post them below. Kaylin can read them while I'm going and I can help out. If you have any questions or... If you just want to say hey, we'll say hi back. I usually don't go two pin crazy. I put one in each side and one at the top. So now our towel is hooped and ready to go. So this again is the bottom. So remember which way your design is loaded. I have my design loaded on here. So his ears are on the left. So I want his face at the bottom where that f finished seam is on the towel. So now we're going to hoop it. And we're ready to go. And now we're going to just, the peeker is going to work like a typical applique. So we're going to walk through the steps. Batman only has a 10 minute stitch out. He's only 53, a little over 5,300 stitches. So he's not going to take us very long. I picked an easy one, um, especially for those who haven't done one before. This is going to give you a quick, um, quick idea of how to do it, how easy it is, and get your feet wet before you dive into some of the harder ones, if you like. So anyway, what we're going to do, the first stitch, if you're following along on your stitch guide, um, the first stitch is going to be our placement stitch. And if you haven't done applique before, if you're adding other pieces of fabric onto your finished product to make something, that's an applique. So when you have an applique, you're gonna, for the first stitch is going to be a placement. I'm gonna run it, and then it's gonna show us exactly how much fabric we need, and it's gonna show us exactly where to lay it. So we're not just blindly throwing a piece of fabric up there, which you could do but it could waste a lot of fabric. And with vinyl, I like to make sure and get the most out of each piece. So anyway, we're gonna run our step number one. Our threads are all loaded, everything's loaded. So here we go. This is gonna do our, we probably shouldn't do one though, it's yellow. Hold on, I'm gonna change the color on that because um, we want it to show up. We'll do green, do two. We're gonna do green. Just so you can see it once it stitches out. So now it's going to stitch out our placement stitch.
wiper is still not working. Okay, so now we have our placement stitch. You can see exactly where we need to lay our fabric. So I'm going to put it back on the hoop. And when you take it off the hoop, make sure you always put it back on the same way you took it off. Ask me how many times I've put it back on the wrong <laughs> way. Oops. I'm really good friends with my seam ripper. So now we're going to use this fun vinyl from Mikri. I love their stuff. Oh my gosh. So this one is like a black vinyl, but it has some almost gold, yellow, glittery stuff in it. I love it. And since we're doing a yellow towel, I thought black with a little gold. You know, who doesn't need a little glitter in their life? Even Batman. So here I'm going to lay it down. When you lay down your fabric, make sure it covers all of your placement stitch again so that you can make sure and have the whole piece being covered. Otherwise, you'll it'll run off. So anyway, here we go. Our next stitch is going to be a tack down stitch. The tack down stitch is going to hold your applique piece in place. So then you can cut out around it and move on with your project and it'll stay all set. I'm losing my words. Here we go. So this one again, it doesn't always matter what color, um, but typically on a tack down, I use the same color as I'm going to use for my satin stitch. So we're going to move that one to black and we're going to run this around. In vinyl, I like to help it because sometimes it puffs up. Okay, so now I'm going to, I guess I could just pull it out. Okay, so now you can see, actually you can't, there's a player. Come over here. I don't know if you can see, of course, now that I use black, you probably can't, I should have done another color, but you can see very faintly the lines of where it's stitched down. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my applique scissors, which these are my best, what? It's like a haze. I know, that's weird. Oh, the glare is weak. Um, I'll these scissors are awesome and they help get under the applique fabric without ruining my project. My mom gave them to me when, well actually this is a second pair, they're gingers. Um, my mom gave them to me when I first started doing machine embroidery. She does hand applique and said these are the best ever and they are. But they're starting to get weak because I cut so much vinyl. So anyway, here we go. So I'm going to do... I'm going to cut as close as I can to that stitch without cutting the stitch itself. Because we want it to continue to hold down the fabric until we can get our satin stitch on there to secure it in place. So if you accidentally cut over a couple threads, that's not going to break the project or ruin it. You don't have to start over. But too many in a row or... What? It'll kind of rearrange the vinyl -ish. Yeah, it could puff out and you just don't want to do it. So do your best. really hot down here today. It feels good. Usually it's freezing. I feel like I need some background music. It's really quiet in here. And Kaylin won't sing to me. Elevator music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, we're a little goofy around here. But you like a little elevator music. 
I didn't say elevator music. I just said music. Well, I gave you some music. I guess I didn't. Some say background that. music. That's true. Ding. At least it wasn't Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. I almost went for that. And I'm like, oh, wait, never mind. So when people ask you what you did all day, or what you did on your Sunday afternoon, you listen to someone sing elevator music and cut out vinyl. Okay, we're almost done. I'm going to, I messed, I cut a little wonky over here. Ding. You've reached your final destination. Okay. We are done. Okay, so now we have Batman's facial piece ish done. Silhouette. Yeah, there you go. So he's all ready and he's ready for stitch number two or Let's three. Step We're on down. Step three. Yes, and again, after you pull it off, make sure and put him back on the same direction. Or his ears will stitch out at the other end and you do not want that. That would be silly. You'd have an upside down and inside out Batman. Right? Okay, so again, if you're following along, our next step is now his eyes. So we're going to stitch those out. You wanted yellow? Yep. She wants those yellow. So that's on needle one. So after the, you, I can't talk. When I do a peeker or an applique, I have all the applique pieces stitch out first. So you'll be doing a lot of cutting in the beginning, but then if you have a multi-needle machine or you, all you have to do is switch threads um, for co different colors, at least you can kind of let the machine go and you don't have to get your scissors back out and back out. We're done cutting now. So that's how the designs are. And most designers do that. So anyway, back to the eyes. Oh, I will. I'll take it to the next school party. How's that sound? <laughs> I put it on a beach towel. Then. Oh well. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it over the top of him. You can pin it down. 
to hold it in place. <laughs> what are you doing upstairs? You sound like an elephant up there. Because Jordan's trying to take the remote from me. Because she turned the line guard off. Then go watch it in the playroom. Mm. Woohoo, we hit 10 people. Yay, we've got 10 watchers. Thank you guys for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Say hi, Kinsley. Hi. I don't know what she's wearing. She changed out of her dress clothes from church and put that amazing outfit on. <laughs> it matches. There's pink and pink. Yeah, it is. It does match. Okay, so now we're ready to do our final stitch, our tack down. Look, we have 12 viewers. Check that out. Oh, I just saw the pop-up. Oh, 11, 12. Okay, so here we go. Our and final stitch is, again, our satin stitch on this one. And we want that to be black. So it follows the outline of him. So we're going to put that on three. What? Wrong, wrong thing. I'm not watching. I was watching you. What? It's seven minutes to go around his head. Oh. Okay. No. Give me my remote. Okay. Joanne's. 
it's more bland colors but my basics um and i put they they're on the big rolls they have canvas backing so they can go in the washer and dryer some of this thinner stuff that i've gotten it's scratchy i do not put this through the washer or dryer i use this on snap tabs and even some of that i don't use on snap tabs because it's so thin and scratchy that they get so worn and sometimes it perforates so i don't want that either um this drawer is mainly except for my white i don't know how that got in there vinyl from Mikri world and this one is from joanne's but these again have um canvas backing and they're thicker they're not scratchy they're glossy on top and they are okay to go through the washer and dryer if you go to Mikri world's website they actually have ones it'll say for washable i think on their website it, speci it specifies i can't even talk what you can use it for and what you can't use it for but yes I specifically use ones that can go through the wash on my towels because they are going to get washed. Batman is just about to finish up. Megan, I'm so glad you were able to join us and watch. I know a lot of people, even myself, I was intimidated until I watched the video. So I'm glad I can help others because they're so much fun and seriously, they sell so well at Perfect. Yes, at Pam said, I'm sharing my knowledge. It's not nice to keep it to myself. I don't know what that face was. Sorry, that was scary. She's patiently awaiting her Bammy and Tell. So as soon as this finishes up, we're going to assemble the towel. And I'll show you how easy that is, too. I really take shortcuts, which I shouldn't, but my customers are completely happy with their towels. My kids love their towels. I haven't had any complaints, so I'm going to show you how I do it. Some people do French seams, which is totally okay. But I've done a couple craft shows, and I my goal was like 50 towels, and I was doing 25 towels a week because I sign up short notice. And i got to get them done as quick as possible. So we're going to do that today. I also had a serger. I bought a serger the other day and we used that and it was so awesome. The seams were gorgeous. But the serger hated me and it shot a needle at my eyeball and luckily it missed. It hit my eyelid and I gladly sent her back to the store. So now I'm on the search for a better serger that is not awful like that. It was just a cheap one. Um, so anyway, we're going, now I'm tearing off the washable salvi. So this is funny. When I was younger, and still to this day, my mom used to watch this quilting lady on TV. And every time she cut a piece of fabric, she would take it and go, woo, and throw it behind her head. And I thought it was the funniest thing. I was like, that would be so much fun to be her. And look, now I'm her. Oh, no, I'm Lost my mind. Okay, so now I'm going to unpin Batman, and Kaylin is going to come over here and hold the camera. Mr. Batman. And we're going to continue finish assembling our towel. Ouch. Oh, and I used Cutaway. What was I thinking? Cutaway is perfectly fine, I'm telling you. I just typically use... Cutaway. Uh, tear away but this is kind of tearing away I cut my finger and now it hurts be careful okay so anyway here is our hood um also typically I would do a better job getting him closer to the bottom um but he's fine where he's at I'm going to start including a guide I was thinking about this last night Something that I can stitch on the towel before the design starts, and then it'll show you exactly where you need to line your towel up. So I'll do better at that. But anyway, for now, this is our Batman and our hood. And you see our finished edge 
is at the bottom by his, where his nose would be in his face. Mouth. Mouth, whatever. <laughs> and now what we're going to do, looking at the design, holding a piece on the left, holding a piece on the right, we're going to fold it in half. And this is your seam at the top. It is opposite your open, or you're not your open. It's opposite your finished end. We are going to sew this shut. So come over here. I'm sorry what that lady tried to tell you. <laughs> not gonna. I'm kidding. And let's ooh, sorry. pin it. Bish. Kind of just a clasp. I'm really a bad sewer. I take shortcuts, like I said. Um, I'm impatient. I just like to get things done. I should, you know, should be better. So anyway, here is our open seam. We're going to sew that shut. And typically what I do, since now I don't have my serger, I'm going to put it on, and I have my older, I should have gotten out of their machine. This one not that good? This one is just, it's harder to see, like, where it's lining up. Anyway, we're going to do just this single zigzag. It's stitch number three. I don't want to sew over my finger. And we're going to back it up. Pincushion over there. I just pinned it over there. I didn't see that. So I was going to take a shot. Okay, so now we've sewn that one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip it and then I'm going to sew a straight stitch. Just a regular plain old straight stitch. Right down the zigzag. Right at the edge. Just gives it extra security. The hood's gonna be worn a lot, used a lot, washed a lot. So whatever you can do to make that easy as possible. I'm gonna cut that off. Where's my scissors at? My scissors are next to over here somewhere. Can get that. Now we're gonna flip it open, and we have our hood. So this is the seam we just sewed and it goes right down the back of our face. So now we're left, I'll lay it down flat. When you lay it down flat, it's gonna look just like this. Again, if you wanna do a French seam or use a serger so you don't have these raw edges, totally up to you. Um, I'm just showing you the basics of what work. Like I said, it works for me. It works for what I give my own kids. Um, but if you're selling them on Etsy or wherever, again, my craft fair customers have loved them and don't see an issue. So I just leave them like that. Now back to our towel. This is, Kaylin picked out this towel for the body of the towel. This is the inside. So when you're wrapped in the towel, these are your seams, your rough edges. Fold those together. All those, I hate those little fray things. Um, and you've got you, your towel in half. All we were doing on that step was finding the center of the towel. So again, this is the outside of your towel the good side, like if you're folding your towels and you want the good side to show, that's the side right here. Then we're going to place our hood. So the seam of the hood is right on the center of the towel. And just with one layer, we're going to Clip him in place or pin him, whatever you want to do. And then open it the rest of the way now that you've got your center marked. Is that your phone? Mm-hmm. 
So now we have our hooded towel. And we're going to sew this in place. I actually put my pins upside down. What I do when I put it on the sewing machine, when I sew it, I'm gonna sew my line right into here, right next to the seam. So then it gets hidden from the outside. Mom, where'd you get your amazing clips from? I, the bigger ones, I bought a pack on Amazon, I believe. They had multiple sizes. But the smaller ones, I also have smaller ones. I got at Joann's. But they were a lot cheaper on Amazon. I'll post a link to that. And I'll post a link to Mikri also. So any places that I'm getting stuff from, I'll post you links so you can see. But anyway, these are awesome. I use them all the time. And... When I, when I use fast frames, because I typically don't use these frames unless I'm doing hoods, just because it's easier to mark my centers, but when I'm using my fast frames, if you have a multi-needle, these are awesome, because again, I don't hoop any of my stuff, and with fast frames, you can't, so I use sticky stabilizer and these clips, so it clips right around my frame. These are also awesome if you're doing t-shirts or anything on your hoop that you need clipped out of the way so you don't run over it um, or stitch it behind your project like a shirt these are great to hold stuff out of the way also okay so back to sewing our hood like I said I'm going to line this up so that my needle is right at that seam I'm going to back it up. Here we're at the end. So I'm gonna run over it a couple times, pull it out, and now our hood is on. And from the inside, you can't see your stitching because it's hidden. You can't even see that there. I used white on this, and you can't see it in there. And white on the back but it shows it hides in the L. So anyway what we're going to do really quick is snip our extra threads. This is usually Jordan's job. She sits and snips all the threads and then rolls them or Kaylin will roll them and then Kaylin ties the ribbon around them. So now here is our finished hooded towel, and Kaylin is going to show it to you. See how awesome that is? And she is 14 years old and a little over 5 foot 5, and she is now the proud owner of a Batman hooded towel. And I'm not ashamed of it. There you go. Okay, so like I said, Andrea, what you can do is you can do the French seams. Um, I don't have a video on French seams. I know some people do them. I do them when I make pillowcases. Um, but as far as the towels, I've washed my kids' towels a few times and have not really had any problems. Um, but you can always try the French seams. I would look that up. Maybe I'll look that up, learn it, and I'll do a video on that. So now Kaylin is going to bring the hooded towel to the table. Stop flying, Batman. Oh, man. And we're going to show you how to get it ready for a show. If you want to sell these at a craft show. Where'd the ribbon go? I don't know. Where's my ribbon go? Oh, I grabbed it. Okay, put the towel down. 
<laughs> Angie said you're rocking the towel, young lady. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so I already have a video on how to fold a hooded towel, but I'm just going to, since we're doing start to finish, I'm going to have her do on here just so we've got it. You don't have to go searching for it. If you're watching this video, you've got it. I can't back up any further. Hold on. I'm going to iron board. Okay, so now you have your towel and you lay it so the face of the hood is up and you're looking at the inside of the towel and you're going to roll the bottom part into thirds. So she rolled it up. And now she's going to roll it one more time. So now she's got it rolled into thirds. And then fold each half in. So it, the points meet. And then start rolling. And I'm just going to give her a hand here because it's easier. And you meet them in the center. And now, I don't know where this is. This is I moved everything out of the way. Just use the rotary cutter. Oh, you find them? Okay. Sorry, we couldn't find the scissors. She's getting her ribbon ready. And I guess the yellow would work. Get the yellow. I forgot you were using a gray towel. Sorry. She is an expert. She rolled and tied all of my towels this week. So, anyway, so now you're going to tie it in a pretty bow or a bow. I don't know about a bow. I'm, I'm tying it. It'll, it'll be tied. Sometimes she'll get two different colors and of thinner and tie those. And we try to stay pretty basic with some of the designs for boys. For boys. Okay, so there it is. Oh, these frays. We need a lint roller. And, and then she's gonna fold the sides over. It's a warm towel. Why is it warm? Why is it warm? I don't know. It feels like it's been a long time. Because you were running around with it. I was not running around with it. And flying. I was not flying. Show them how you're going a little too fast. Oh, I'm sorry. I folded them. Okay, so she folds them down. Shoot this one out a little bit. Sorry, I didn't see that one. Okay, so, and then it just gets the bulk of the hood out of the way. And now she's going to pull the top up and over. And there is your hooded towel. And we made that in less than an hour. However, this was one of the easier, quicker stitch outs. Some of the stitch outs are a little longer, but we had explanations, we had demonstration, and we had a little bit of Batman flying. So it took us a little bit longer, but I hope that this video, some of you that have not done hooded towels yet, or you haven't, maybe you haven't even done an applique, I know branching out from a plain stitched item can be intimidating, especially when you're working with these machines and things seem a lot more complicated, but once you dive in, it is so much fun. It opens up so many more opportunities and just gives you a lot more variety. And so hopefully I was able to help you with that. And if you have any questions, this video is going to stay posted. Go back and watch it. Um, yeah, it should stay on the site. I'm trying to start up a YouTube channel, so all the videos will be there too. But we're going to continue to go live with Stitch Outs. If there's something else that you're intimidated by or something you had a question on, I can do another video. I can go over something or send me a message anytime you want. I've got a couple great admins on my page. Um, everybody in the group is really helpful. So make sure, don't be afraid, don't be scared. Um, everyone's there to help. So... Hopefully it just gave you a new activity for this afternoon. If you try a peeker or a hooded towel, please share on the page. Let us know. Show us what you did. And we're going to have some great peekers coming out this week. And Shark week. it's going to be so exciting. So stick around and I'll talk to you soon. Happy Sunday.